Welcome to a new Fusion 360 tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to use the new 4-axis rotary toolpath that's available within the Manufacture workspace. This new strategy is included within the Manufacturing extension. To buy it, just click on the wrench icon on the top right corner of the interface, then add the pack to the cart and purchase it paying with your cloud credits. Once you have access to it, you'll find the rotary toolpath within the multi-axis drop-down menu. Let's now look at how to use this strategy on an example part like the one you can see on my screen. I'll click on Rotary, then in the Tool tab I'll pick a ball nose. Moving on to the Geometry tab, I can choose my Rotary Axis, my Rotary Origin, where I want my toolpath front and back to be, and whether I want to set angular limits or not. Keeping in mind, limits will only work with selected toolpath styles, as we'll see later on. As I created my setup relative to the part geometry, I want both my rotary axis and origin to align with the workpiece coordinate system. In the next tab, I can choose my clearance and retract radii. I can also change what Fusion 360 will consider as the outer radius to be machined. By default, this will be equal to the stock outer diameter. Moving on to the Passes tab, I can pick my Tolerance, the Desire Step Over, the Cutting Direction and the Toolpath Style. Note that Angular Limits only work with linear and circular styles. If you don't want to cut with the tip of the tool, you can also apply a tool offset. This will offset the contact point of the tool with the part, allowing to cut with the flutes rather than the tool center. Please make sure your machine has the right capabilities before running code that includes angular limits. In the final tab, you can change the leads and the links for your strategy, similarly to other Fusion 360 toolpaths. Let's now generate it with the style set to spiral without any angular limits or tool offsets. Notice how the tool spirals down the part without ever retracting. If I now edit the strategy to add a 2mm tool offset, you'll be able to see how I'm not cutting with the tool center. Let's now look at another example to take a better look at the other two styles of rotary toolpath. I'll create a new rotary toolpath and then in the Passes tab I'll change the style to circular. If I now simulate, you can see how the toolpath segments differ from the ones generated with the style set to spiral. In fact, with circular selected, the tool does not cut continuously around the part, but needs to step over after completing a 360 degrees rotation. I'll now show you how to use angular limits on this toolpath. Let's assume you just want this area to be machined. Tick Set Angular Limits, select the start point of the area to machine, and then, under Endpoint mode, you can choose to either select an endpoint of the model or enter a precise end angle. I'm going to pick an endpoint and I'll then generate the toolpath. As you can see, only the area enclosed within the two selected points will be machined. As I mentioned, limits will also work when the style is set to linear. Let's first look at it without setting them. As you can see on my screen, the tool runs along the part backwards and forwards. If I now choose to set angular limits, I can follow the same workflow as before to show you how the strategy will look, but I'll then tick the Flip Sector checkbox to machine everything except the selected area. This way, you can either choose the areas to be machined or the ones to avoid, following the same workflow. I hope this tutorial will help you get started with the new rotary toolpath in Fusion 360. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and let us know what you think in the comments.